And good evening everybody, welcome to the studio this evening. And we will be carrying on with this fella. Manual zoom, huh? <laughs> That with the white gloves. Um, that's not too bad. Now everything, everything here now is in front of my screen, so I've got to peer around it to even look at my own uh, OBS output. And I'm just looking there to see whether you're getting too much glare off the light. It's not too bad. I'd have to put a little one of these days I'll make a little hat for that camera but um, not just yet and the only thing I forgot as usual is glasses saves my memory saves hold more right so um, Oh, my reference picture as well. Oh, where's the mouse? And one of these three screens is a mouse. There it is. Uh, okay, and so yeah, just finish off this side of the leg. Do that side of the leg and do a small amount in the chest area. And then do some overall shading. So essentially that's it. Right. I'm trying to be quite faint down here. You can always make it brighter later. Which I mean, I know means that you probably can't see it at all. But in some ways, that's that's the right thing. Um, you're not being able to see it at all because it means I've got it really faint, which is what the intention was. And this tool, hmm. tell you what, I'm sort of uh, feeling a little bit meh tonight. Oh, not really feeling, well, not sure whether I'm really feeling whether or not I want to do art or whether or not I actually want to do any crafting at all. So we shall see if I can relax into doing this. I think I'm just feeling sort of... I don't know. I can't... Uh, I can't procrastinate doing this. That's the one good thing about streaming. I can't f easily. F <laughs> it means it means I can't find a good reason not to do art. So that's um, that's quite useful. But if I wasn't streaming tonight, I wouldn't be doing this. I do know that. Not sure if it's because I if it just want to do something else. So. Whether my day has just um, upset me a little bit. By upset, I don't mean sort of, you know, um, uh, upset as in 
well, I'm trying to think upset as in, I don't know. Uh, if somebody's annoyed me or something like that, it's just... Uh, I don't know, just an odd sort of day. I almost kind of feel like I haven't got enough time to do everything at the moment. So I don't know what it is. This isn't coming out as faint as I'd like it to, but I don't actually mind. This is whiter than down here, and I could have fared up to it, so this getting um, a little brighter than I want it to be isn't actually too bad. Still trying to remember to do um, uh, to do all the hair lines in the correct orientation. In some ways, I guess it's it's a detail. I'm not quite sure how much people would actually notice if I did them wrongly. Fairly obviously I'd know, and now you'd know, <laughs> if I'd done them wrongly, but... I think it's a nice detail. In some cases, for some animals, uh, doing it wrong would look odd. I'm not sure for the leopard it would because I'm not sure people um, know it well enough like they would do say for a cat or a dog. Uh, well. I know it's a bot and I know that even if it wasn't they're still not around but I'm the only one that can advertise in my channel unless I say so. And that's what I'm doing, advertising in my channel. <laughs> At least there are no Moobots around. He disappeared for quite a bit last night. I think one of the things, if you play music while doing things like this, one of the things you've got to be a little bit wary of 
is uh, you end up doing uh, like scratches or drawing or whatever it is you uh, are, that you're actually doing in time to the music beat and sometimes that doesn't help <laughs> you end up you know, working too fast or and then you start making mistakes if you're not careful I think sometimes perhaps having music that essentially has either very low, long beat, slow, slow beats per minute, or um, no particular beat at all is quite useful. Fluffy Twiglet, good evening and welcome. How was college today? University, sorry. Okay, it's time to show up a little bit now. Oh, why is she leaving? Is it... Well, I was about to say moving house, but it doesn't... Uh, better go somewhere else? Uh, yeah, it did rain sort of quite a bit today, didn't it? It was raining up here in uh, in Yorkshire most of the day. Well, I won't say horrendously dark, but really dark today. got through this uh, this leg I'm not necessarily I don't think I'm going to shade it at this moment in time I think I'm going to do the other side and then uh, and then shade everything in one go well <laughs> at the same time not say one go that's kind of, that may be a bit optimistic but I do kind of feel that we're getting closer to the end now on this. Ah, 3D block. Good evening and welcome. 
doesn't get seen into um, streaming either since that first time. Have you um, you given up yet? Uh, free and ordered a new computer, or are you still persevering with the old one? Am I? Yes, I am. Look at a mark that's actually on my computer screen. <coughs> I'll have to get the um, isopropyl alcohol alcohol out and clean the screens. When I'm starting to look at trying to rub something off the, uh, the scraper ball, it's actually on the screen, it's probably a good idea. So, now I've got to do what I've done over there, sort of, over here. Sev ZX Elite. As far as I'm aware, there are no leopards at all that are native to any of the American continent at all. Hey, that's true. <laughs> yeah, free free has joined with that Moobot this evening. Uh, It's a pity, given that you've got um, you got a decent card in it that would support them, or should support the multiple monitors. Basically a copy on that side. Well, not a copy because the spots are different and will be different. Um, Stop it round about there, and I want to bring this here yeah, somewhat that sort of direction. And that needs to go further. Uh, okay. Getting that um that chest area angles right. It's going to be a little interesting. I don't have a lot of anything much other than shading to um, to, to illustrate where the legs and the chest area sort of merge together. Um, I haven't looked at egg split too much, but I think there's only a couple of things that. OBS doesn't give me. One of them is, is to be able to uh, preview a scene setup before you actually run it. And um, some tra and scene transitions would be nice, which I think, I'm not sure, Explit, does Exploit do scene transitions? Um, I know OBS they're talking about doing, well, perhaps in their professional version, scene, scene previews. Which would be uh, would be nice for some things. 
not that I use it that often, but... Mm. Okay, let's do just around... I've got a very faint shadow. Just around some of the neck area there. Okay, I didn't know Xplit had a non had a non subscription version. I thought it was all just subscription, but uh, obviously, um, not correct. So what I've got to do is get quite close up, but leave a small gap, which as I've done on the other side, there is a there is a slight shadow with this. But I'm going to exaggerate anyway uh, with having a an outline down here because all the fur is in exactly the same direction. If I actually joined it on, unless I change the brightness of one or the other, now why what that scratch? Uh, you wouldn't see the edge of the face. So one way to do that is just to leave a slight gap like this. Almost the equivalent of outlining the face. Uh, but in actual fact, looking at a couple of the reference pictures, I can sort of see a shadow actually on both sides, um, which kind of naturally highlights the edge of the face, which is quite convenient. Now that's too far away, but I'm going to come back and make it closer. Free version of two. Okay. Um, might be. I might have to have a look. Was of course just a heck of a lot easier initially with uh, with OBS. Like it does, of course, as you say, if you if your system's feeling if your system's feeling a little laggy when you're running it. <laughs> I kind of wonder what mine's going to do with with a single um, single i7 running at 2.4G when you're running the Xeons. Okay, I'm just closing up the gap around the uh, around the edge here. I want a very tiny, well, not very tiny, but a very small gap.
I almost feel like sticking my tongue out at this point, the usual sort of thing when I'm concentrating on something. Don't know quite what it is, whether somehow some in the, somewhere in the past that gave extra attention to, to detail or in boosted um, concentration, I don't know. I just wonder why evolutionary wise when we're concentrating on something we stick our tongue out I wonder what um, advantage it gave us yeah. okay you um you're gonna be streaming tonight then uh, free Aldel H, good evening. Welcome to the studio this evening. Okay. Uh, my, I'm trying to think what I was saying at the point where your your comment about external cooling makes sense. <laughs> um. I don't know, I can't remember what I was talking about. Hmm. Uh, I, well, be, hmm. good question, Aldel H. Uh, the stuff going out to Twitch seems to be going out okay. Um, oh, tongue your tongue out. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Now I remember. I think, uh, I think Twitch has started to use, uh, I think I've, a couple of times now I've come across the HTML5 player. I know you can fire it up anyway if you want to do that, but I think I've come across it a couple of times now on, on some streams. Maybe that's got something to do with it. But Wi-Fi is always a good bet for anything causing, uh, causing problems. Kind of, I noticed um, 
I noticed on one stream because you've got a slightly different sort of tool layout or had a slightly different tool layout uh, but um, I kind of haven't watched a lot of the weekend so maybe I've just got used to it and not noticing it again which is entirely possible I don't want to start at that end and work up, but it's going. It's easier starting at this end, work down, but then it puts the hairs in the wrong overlay. Um, let's start down here. So they kind of look same here and then get, no, okay. We're not doing, not too bad in terms of the curve here. comes around the leg as the fur comes around the leg the, there's a sort of a curve goes on uh, that's been there for quite a long time old LH was on the old one as well um. <laughs> I suspect it probably is for me as well Always seems to be. Well, that's always the one I pick if um, if I have problems. I'm just sort of ghosting in um, black spots, but I'm doing them with scratch. The sort of I've actually sort of um, doing them with fur around them, not drawing around them because that puts scratches in the wrong place and the wrong direction, uh, and then they stand out as they do up here where I did that. So I'm just. Um, using fur like scratches around the outside to highlight them and that way um, I don't get the, the scratch in the wrong direction I'm doing it again really lightly because I do want this to be quite light around here uh, light as in um, light as in dark <laughs> <laughs> Light as in uh, you know, very few scratches. And that's down into the chest area.
really difficult to mark to make up camouflage. So that's what effectively this is, camouflage. Scratch. The, the, the urge to have external cooling is, is getting stronger, as you might just have noticed. I don't want to do any uh, particular markings down here because I basically won't be able to get them as light as I want them to. Uh, and so they, the edges will show up brighter than the rest of the fur around it. So I'll kind of do those randomly as I, uh, as I do the bottom edge of the fur here. But in the meantime, I have to continue doing up here. That's interesting, the fur direction is slightly different there to what I was expecting. It changes direction. Okay. That's going to be an interesting one for the transition. I guess that makes sense a little bit uh, and I'll have to fiddle that area just around there side as well but I didn't notice that
Thank you very much, old LH. That's uh, nice of you to say that. And then the third direction there is going sort of that. Yeah, because it's going to follow, follow the chest area a little bit. Okay, so let's work from the outside in. So we can now start working around here. Just okay, you can't actually see what I've been doing, can you? On camera, you sort of see little, uh, you see, see some of the marks that I've been making. That's the, uh, so they're the black spots, and I've got to fill in around them. So I want to stay on the inside or radius of my hand movement. I was about to turn the board over, but uh, then I'd be sort of working in an unnatural curve. Just like on the other side, I got thousands and thousands of little tiny scratches or tiny hairs. Polymer clay? Um, no, I don't think so. Heard of, um, well, a couple of clays in that respect. Uh, Wax-based clay, which isn't 
clay at all, I don't think. Um, mind you, polymer clay possibly isn't. And I've heard of things like metal laden clay, uh, which may be polymer based. You mould and and then once once you fire it, and you might even be able to fire it in a domestic oven, the um, the matrix that held it together uh, disappears, and you the metal uh, fuses. But now that sounds like something new. What's uh, what is it uh, then, LDOH? I kind of want to clay that um, doesn't make a mess at all, doesn't get your hands all dirty, uh, is easy to clean up and doesn't and you can reuse it until you decide to fix it somehow. That would be kind of my <laughs> my ideal clay. As I mentioned before, sculpting kind of interests me and I'd love to be able to do it on the computer, but um, I'm not really, these days, I'm just not really into that sort of, um, it feels like it would be messy.
I think I can hear thunder outside. I hope it isn't actually. Now doing this sort of individual scratching of, of hairs, and I mean I'm not doing every single actual hair, but it produces what I feel is a more natural sort of fur looking um, texture. I could do sort of just town um, uh, using sort of cross hatching techniques. Uh, a bit like I did with the John Miles one, if you've seen you've seen that one. Uh, but it sort of doesn't feel right. It would be a heck of a lot quicker for doing this. But this kind of feels as though it represents the um, the leopard a little bit more closely. looking not too bad
Ah, give me my eyes a bit of a rest. There's so many fine lines together, you eyes tend to go all cross eyed and googly eyed. Now, if this. <laughs> If the lighting was different on this uh, leopard, that kind of looks good with sort of lighter this side than this side at the moment. But then we've got this sort of highlight on the top of the head here and across. Kind of mixed messages at the moment, so this has got to get a lot brighter than it currently is. Certainly more than, than over this area here. Uh, which means that the cheek has to do a little bit as well and in theory I guess this should get brighter so this doesn't look as bright it's a bit too a bit too bright if that had turned out like this it would have been ideal Still fine. No. You might be hearing some of your music. Um, the Elgato, well, I don't know about the HD in particular. Elgato is still supposed to be a good, um, a good make for capture, but I'm trying to think um, 
what some of the other streamers that I've seen um, who have mentioned it use. And uh, Elgato usually seems to be uh, the one that they use, but with a particular model. I don't actually know anything about uh, free. I've had no reason to look into them either, to be honest. Not working properly. I'm guessing that um, if I have a good capture card is going to be one that will um, this should be you'll be connecting over USB so one that can either encode it with sufficient bandwidth to get into uh, a USB 2 stream or mind you if you, if you look at a new machine you might you're possibly into USB 3 uh, as motherboard stuff in which case you might want to take that into account looking for a capture card one that will support USB 3 otherwise um, you could be stuck with not enough, either not enough bandwidth or um, limiting your motherboard choices And I'm aware that some motherboards do um, have a USB 3 to USB 2 type converter chip on board. So that could have an impact upon um, stuff as well, free.
Uh, yeah, I have forgotten about that. You might need to as well. I'm so used to these days of motherboards that have just about everything on them that you kind of forget about there's, there's this whole well, what you, you know, in older PCs, everything used to be on cards, so you know, uh, you know an RS232 port would be on an additional card, an LPT parallel port, uh, and all these extra things would be just on cards. And then motherboard started having everything built in, and it was so rare you plugged a card in apart from maybe a motherboard, uh, sorry, a, a graphics card or possibly a sound card that I kind of forget. <laughs> Oh, true. Yeah, no, I understand that, uh, for you, especially without the converters and, and your bandwidth to support it. But I remember when I plugged this, the HD um, Logitech in, I couldn't put two webcams, even this one, which I think 640 by 720, uh, at its native resolution. Um, I couldn't put two of the, them on the same bus and a couple of and I, I know I had problems with the um, A to D converter for the mic on the same bus as the camera as well so I've had to sort of make sure that uh, some of the bandwidth intensive stuff uh, is, is you know, on their own separate controllers Hmm. And just USB 3. If if the device is supported it, and that's the key thing, because I'm I'm not don't think you can plug a plug a USB 2 into a USB 3 slot. Don't think they're physically compatible. Even though logically speaking, they're sort of backwards compatible. So you can do things like plug a USB 3 to 2. Converter. The protocols are the same, they're just not physically the same because USB 3 carries power. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've got cat hairs on my nose somewhere. Yeah, something. Yeah, I've not looked. I've not really looked into it because it's because it's. Well, I was about to say it would need a new machine, but of course you point out to me the fact that I've forgotten that you could plug a card in. Not that I, you know, 
intending to look at any USB 3 devices these days just yet anyway. But they're likely to certainly become more prevalent uh, in the future. I think I'm going to think about getting a head mounted magnifier before long on doing this sort of stuff. Oh, come on, uh, Free. A plain black case. Um, that shouldn't be too hard for you. Come on. A um, couple of hours. Any case is black. Clear cut. That's a different matter. Mind you, there again, given your interest in space, shall we say, shall we say, what's wrong with close encounters of the third kind? I mean, uh, some some airbrushing on the case of, in that thing would be quite um, quite interesting, and um, in itself would be um, a decent few streams. And you're actually thinking about if you're going to try and paint a case black with um, with a velocity, um, it might take a bit of work. Ah, uh, you okay? You might have to be careful what case you get then. You know, maybe have to get make sure you get a powder coated one. Uh, rather than one that's been um, had some mysterious coating applied to it. You don't want to be rubbing it all the way down to bare metal. That's what got me airbrushing in the first place, was um, wanting to do the case.
Ah, no. Kind of am and I am. Um, I'm not one for lighting up the interior of the case or anything like that, but um, maybe um, some sort of um, just accent lighting, you know, uh, tricolor LED so you can um, you can change them or. Uh, but uh, that's um, that, that's about the only thing I go for. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. So black's the hard black's the hardest colour to paint, though, isn't it? You don't, get, you don't get the shading right or, or the right number of coats on it and so that two look really awkward things. And of course the um, you, you, you know, you've got the problem with cases where you want adequate airflow and, and the, the really nice looking cases generally have bad airflow and the really good looking really uh, good airflow cases don't look that good, uh, or they're you know, plastic or something like that. But and unfortunately, they're not the good cases aren't that cheap. Okay, so yeah, that goes up there, and then the peak of the foreleg is just behind it. At which point they actually the fur changes direction. Okay. Oh, matte black. Oh, okay, yeah. Hmm. Well, one rather than lights, what you can get is something called um, EL panel, a bit like uh, what EL electroluminescent, uh, and in. So, well, generally speaking, they they come as sort of like flexible tubes it's like a like a plastic uh, plastic um, thing that will bend uh, or, or sometimes the, the solid rods but what you can actually get is electroluminescent panel which is it can be anything I don't know it depends on price I guess but something like about sort of eight inches square um, I think it used to be fairly decent and all you need is uh, there's a there's an inverter that goes with it because it's a high voltage device, rel relatively speaking, high voltage, and um, it puts out an even light um, across the whole of the surface. And you can either mask it, or in your case, if you were doing a, a cutout, just stick it behind. So obviously the the light just comes through the cutout. And it's one way of getting an even light without having to put sort of really heavy uh, or large power lights inside the case to get a decent uh, decent output. Hmm. The only problem I found with um, with, with uh, rattle can paints and uh, wet and dry is you don't have to go through it really quick. You burn through it back to the surface and have to sort of spray it again. 
Um, though for some reason, rattle can, for me, whenever I've used rattle can, it's been really, really thin. I just suppose that's part of the deal with having to, to, to get it out of um, a can. But mm. You can get them in different colours as well. They, the, uh, you know, orange, red, white and a blue white so it looks brighter but they're not they're not sort of really uh you know 100 watt in your face type uh, bright they're sort of soft bright if that makes sense mm. so if i run the four leg up there um, yeah, the transition's just about there. There, what I'm doing is different to that side there. I'm cur the fur. Cur I'm looking at the fur now, and it curls over the leg, which kind of makes sense. Um, so I obviously wasn't looking at my reference pictures quite so well when I did this side. Um, but they obviously there's a peak of the leg where the fur changes direction, and that I just look at where that runs up. And it sort of runs up this sort of direction here uh, so this is this fur is coming up this fur is coming up this way and it forms an, an inverted u shape up to round about there and then it sort of changes <laughs> again i probably was uh, doing um rattle can stuff wrong free because I'm sure I put more than three or four coats on but same when I um, because when I when I did my PC I had to do the clear coat using rattle cans and uh, I think I think they had about five coats um, done as per instructions if you see what I mean and um, once they'd hardened, though, I, uh, polishing it back was really hard. I um, tried, uh, yeah. In fact, I, I think I, I think I burnt through it a few times, so I put some extra coats on, and I don't think I really polished it back after that. <laughs> Nowadays, I'd, I'd probably, um, yeah. I'd use, I'd still, I mean, I'd use single part, single part um, clear. Uh, actually, you can get, you can get non, non-toxic um, two-part clear as well. And I've got a, a large gun, so I'd, I'd use that these days. I wouldn't try it with the, uh, with the spray cans. If I remember rightly, you shouldn't have a problem with that. You've got a friend with um, with a garage, hasn't he? Uh, with a paint shop, haven't you?
Yeah, no, that one I agree with. That one I agree with. I really, I, uh, when I did mine, I really wanted to achieve that really deep shine, which you know, you've got to do by sort of really polishing back, as you know, and uh, never did because the the clear just wasn't thick enough. But One of the advantages of painting onto paper and canvas, you don't need to clear coat it. Or at least not the same way. Talking of which reminds me, I must get something like some of the Createx um, varnish. Is it varnish? It's like a it's, it's, it's a clear, uh, it probably is varnish, but uh, to protect these and get, get the ones I've already done um, sprayed. I understand the trick of doing these is to spray them with um, gloss, gloss to start with because what that does is it removes um, a lot of the like finger marks and stuff that might you might not have noticed was on it they sort of seem to it seems to hide them or dissolve them and then do a, a final matte coat over the top yeah do you, do you, do you clear canvases Something I've never done on paper. I've never worked on a canvas, but um, something I've never done on paper. I'm guessing, in theory, it should help with the colour fast. Um, but Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm guessing it would. Yeah. It will maybe something I'll have to try. <laughs> when I get a chance to do some airbrushing again.
Okay. In case you are considering streaming free, I um, don't know what time you intended to start, but uh, it's about 10 to 10. <laughs> That's true, but I, yeah. I, yeah, I guess you'd have to uh, lug the equipment halfway across the room. It always seems to take a long time though. When I've got to set this camera up, put this camera back in its place, make sure the mic works, put all the you know, the OBS window, the chat window, the reference picture, the move bot window, and the, there's windows all over the place. It always seems to take ages, and I tend to forget something, usually this camera control. But, uh, as is with uh, anybody who's watching, uh, who doesn't doesn't know by now, um, 3D Blog is um, an airbrush artist, um, a, an old paintbrush, acrylic, and now oil painter as well as a gamer, uh, who broadcasts on Twitch. So uh, if you didn't catch that, I highly suggest you check him out. It's quite good fun to watch, and uh, he tends to broadcast from about 10 o'clock for as long as he feels able or willing uh, so check him out <laughs> it is in a way I feel like having a checklist for a, just to make sure because I invariably forget something usually the well the other one is my glasses of course because these are um, a slightly different, well these are a reading prescription, the other is uh, uh, an occupational lenses so they're and they, uh, they're a slightly older prescription so I tend to need these to be able to see what I'm doing but I still tend to forget them applications out there that will start everything up for you but mm, jump scare came <laughs> oh, is that what it is I've not uh, it's it's a game I haven't um, known about shall we say yeah. playing horror game well, horror games for Halloween eh? I guess I shouldn't wear a headset 
For some reason, this is rem the scrapings around here, you won't see them, but they remind me a little bit of a fingerprint. Uh, just the swirls that are going on.
Right, well, i am done a fair bit on that leg uh, tonight, but I think it's 10 o'clock. In fact, I, don't know. I know it's 10 o'clock. I just looked at the clock. So I think I'm going to uh, stop it there for tonight. What you can see is really dim uh, uh, on the camera, but it's a, it's a fair bit bright here. If I just bring it more into the light, you can sort of see it there. Um, so there's about, what, about a third of that leg being done. And then we've got the transition into the chest area here. And when I... Um, when I lighten this leg a little bit, I'm going to change some of the fur direction, which I can do, which actually will make it lighter in doing that. So maybe just a little bit. We'll see. I think um, I made a slight mistake there, but it's um, not too bad. Anyway, guys, 3D Block, thank you very much for dropping in. I may see you in a little bit. Or I may do something else, I'm not quite sure <laughs> yet. Gonna get a drink anyway. I am going to remind anybody watching about the advert that's there. For the uh, the jewellery shop. I think there's some cool things on there, but um, take a look if you haven't already. Um, pass it around and tell everybody, let them have a look and uh, have fun that if you're watching and not following then i do encourage you to do so because then you might get to see one or other of the pussy cats which occasionally pop into the stream we haven't had one tonight uh, which has been quite nice for once and meant i could carry on quite easily doing this if you'd just like a notification however you can follow me on twitter it's at zaragonat the details for that are below the stream window They'll also be on the end plate in a moment. If you'd just like to catch me tomorrow night from approximately 8pm UK time, 1900 hours UTC, or two hours ago, it was 8 o'clock. Thank you all. Hope I'll see you again in the studio in the future. And we'll see you uh, later. Bye-bye.